So let's talk about herbs that help to strengthen our immune system and prevent us from getting sick, but also help our immune system fight the disease when we do get sick. Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Damany, licensed acupuncturist and board certified herbalist with training in Western medicine and nutrition. So I'll try to bring balance and realistic view on this topic. So let's start with an herb that can help us fight cold, flu, cough and all the other yucky symptoms. The name of the herb is elder and we can use both flowers and the berries from this plant. If you have ever been in Europe during summer, you will see this bush almost everywhere. As a kid I used to pick up the flowers then dry it in my grandfather's attic and we would drink it mixed with few other herbs the whole winter. Well, it turns out that the extract from either the elderflowers or berries is very effective in reducing the duration and severity of flu symptoms such as fever, muscle aches, cough, nasal congestion, mucus discharge and headaches. Some trials show significant improvement even after only two days of taking it. But to be realistic, you should give it at least three to four days. If you use the flowers, the daily dose is generally about 5 grams or about a teaspoon of the dried flowers as infusion or a tea. You can also use the tincture and then follow the manufacturer's recommendation. This would be my recommendation if you don't have cough. If you do have a cough, my personal preference is for the syrup, which is made from the elderberries. The specific effective dosage varies across studies, but most suggest using about 2 to 4 teaspoons of the syrup containing standardized extract from the elderberries for about 3 days. Again, check the labels of the manufacturer. Now the best part is that you can purchase preparations that are safe even for children. Unfortunately, as you know, for small children we don't have too many good medicines when they get sick. So this is actually a really good thing to use. Now, to make it more potent, you can combine the tea, tincture or the syrup with vitamin C and zinc, which also help to shorten the duration of the cold and increase the relief from the symptoms. I'll mention a couple more herbs used for treatment of acute symptoms later in this video, but now let's talk about herbs that you can use to prevent yourself from getting sick. Now, in this category, my favorite herb is astragalus. The herb looks like tongue depressor and has been used in traditional Chinese medicine for centuries. Astragalus is a great herb to modulate the immune system, which means basically it makes it stronger and more efficient in fighting not only the common cold and flu, but also some more serious diseases such as cancers. Now, Astragalus has been shown to stimulate various immune cells such as macrophages, natural killer cells and even lymphocytes. All of these are basically essentially your infantry, cavalry and archers in your body's defense fortress. Now you can use astragalus in capsules or as an extract by itself or combined with other herbs that help to support the immune system. But you can also buy the dried sliced root and when you are making soup just throw two, three or five pieces into the soup depends on how much you're making. You should boil it on a low flame first and then add your other soup ingredients. Now keep in mind that according to the traditional Chinese medicine, astragalus is recommended for strengthening the immune system and preventing illnesses rather than treating acute condition. So it's used for the long term to keep the immune system strong. In case of acute illnesses such as cold, flu or fever, especially those that comes with high fevers and yellow phlegm, using astragalus is actually not recommended. The theory behind that is that by strengthening or tonifying the immune system during acute illness, astragalus could actually make the symptoms worse by driving the pathogen deeper into the body or making the body's inflammatory response much stronger. But once again, when the acute phase of the illness has passed, using astragalus can actually help rebuild the immune system and build the energy and then strengthen your body in the recovery process so that you can recover much faster and you can reduce the period of time when the symptoms are actually lingering, which sometimes may last even for a few weeks. 
Now let's switch gears and look at another great herb used for supporting the immune system, and that's Chisandra. Now I first learned about Chisandra from my teacher some 30 years ago. He used to say that the power of Chisandra is so strong that certain hunting tribes from northern China would carry a pouch on their neck filled with the dry Chisandra berries when they went for a long hunting trip. Now, this, is special, this was especially true for the cold winters because chewing on Chisandra berries helped them keep their body warm, basically preserve their internal heat. So this herb is especially great for the winter season. Now traditionally, Shizandra has been the go-to remedy for general fatigue and spontaneous sweating, which represents its ability to strengthen the body and endurance. But when we are talking about the effect of Shizandra on the immune system, Shizandra is really great for its ability to not only make us more resilient to illness, but it also helps to suppress inflammation. Now I discussed this more in my video on natural liver support since Shizandra is really great for our liver and you should check it out, I put the link in the description below. Now just as a side note, you may also want to check the Shizandra's effect on sexual health and again the link, link for the video is in the description. Now when it comes to dosage, in general, if you use Shizandra's standardized extract, you should always follow the manufacturer's recommendations since the concentration can vary based on the manufacturers. But if you prefer the tincture, I mean making your own tincture, you can soak the dry Chisandra berries in high proof alcohol and the dosage then would be about 20 to 30 drops twice daily, which is based on a traditional dosing schedule used in traditional Russian medicine, where Chisandra has a very long tradition. Uh, you can also use about 1.5 to 6 grams of the dried berries made into tea or taken as a powder. Let's talk about a safety. So Shizantra can be taken long term without any negative side effects, which is actually the best way to get the most out of it. It is not one of those hit and quit herbs, so keep that in mind. To get even more out of Shizantra, you can actually combine it with several other herbs that has really strong effect on supporting the immune system, such as Rhodiola or Eleutherococcus, which are also very powerful in supporting the immune system. Now on the market you can frequently encounter combinations of Shizandra with Reishi, Echinacea and few other herbs, all of which are great addition to make Shizandra work even better in terms of stimulating our immune system. I'll be making an entire video dedicated just to the benefits of Shizandra and other herbs discussed today, so don't forget to subscribe to this channel to get notification when I post it. Now let's talk about another herb that can be used to boost the immune system and that's reishi. You might have heard about this remarkable mushroom because it's really a champion when it comes to herbal immune boosters. Reishi is extensively used in traditional Chinese medicine. It is excellent for long term supporting of our immune system and helps to prevent us colds, flus, upper respiratory infection. But studies have also shown that reishi is beneficial in supporting the body in fight against cancers and other serious infections. This is really herb that you should keep on your radar. It is fairly easy to incorporate reishi into your daily life. You can use it as a tincture, tea, or as a capsules. I saw using about 165 milligrams of concentrated extract daily, but you can also use more traditional tincture. And in this case, you probably would want to use about 5 milliliters, 5 ml three times daily. Again, check the dosage of the manufacturer and follow the recommendations. But you can also make warm tea from dried reishi and add it to your soup with astragalus. So this is another way to do that as part of your daily um, routine or when you're making soups. Now, we need to be careful here because reishi can interact with certain medications particularly blood thinners. So in this case, you should stay away from reishi. Now to make reishi even more effective, you can combine with other powerful mushrooms used to support the immune system, such as shiitake or maitake mushrooms. The combination of these three is very powerful combinations of mushrooms to strengthen the immune system and generally improve your health. Look for herbal formulas that combine all three together. Now let's talk about two herbs that are usually combined together 
a so-called herbal antibiotic or antiviral combination. Great for treatment of common cold and flu-like symptoms and that's Echinacea and Golden Seal. Echinacea is North American herb and is particularly great for early stages of colds and other upper respiratory infections. It can modulate inflammatory cytokine levels which play a crucial role in the immune response. Now, usual dosage is around 300 to 500 mg three times a day. Echinacea is generally safe but some people may experience mild allergic reactions as well as upset stomach. So I would say start slow and see how you're doing before you're going to the full dosage. Golden seal is another North American herb which is mostly known for its antimicrobial effect and is also known as herbal antibiotic. Now I probably would not go that far but the truth is that it works great for inflammation of mucous membranes anywhere in the body and helps to support the immune system at the same time. Now as far as dosage, golden seal extract is typically used from about 150 to 300 milligrams a day in divided doses. But again, it's always best to follow the stipulated dosage by the manufacturer. It's a really good idea to keep the mixture of both echinacea and golden seal either together or as a separate bottle because you can also use golden seal to make a mouthwash for sore throat, gums or any other common mouth issues. In this case it combines well with sage and chamomile. So what you do is you basically make tea from chamomile and sage and then drop the appropriate amount of uh, golden seal into the ready tea. For common colds, it's definitely best to use the combination of echinacea and golden seal. Now, based on research and my personal experience, this herbal combination can be very effective in reducing the severity and duration of the common cold and offers more benefits in fighting cold and cold symptoms than when they are used individually. So again, buying the combination uh, that comes in the one bottle is really the best way to go for common cold. It's generally recommended to start taking echinacea and golden seal at the first signs of cold and flu symptoms and to continue for only as long as the cold symptoms persist, but usually no longer than 10 days. This is definitely not the herbal combination that you want to use to support your immune system long term. It's the other herb that we discussed earlier that you should use for that. Now, it goes without saying that herbs are not the only thing that you should do to support your immune system. You also need to stay away from things like things that suppress your immune system, such as sweets, alcohol, and smoking. Now, loading up on fresh veggies or juicing them up daily will supply your body with all the vitamins and minerals that your immune system needs to stay strong. So make sure also that you get sufficient amount of protein and healthy oils in your diet which will again be the sort of ammunition for the immune system to fight with the pathogens. And obviously staying, staying active and getting at least 7 to 8 hours of sleep as a minimum is really really important when you're sick. The body is recovering when you are resting, that's why it makes you tired, so keep that in mind. Now that's all I have for today and I'll see you in our next video.